Look, I get it. School sucks. But is it possible for parents to make school suck even more? That's the question that we're going to tackle today. G'day there, guys. It's your main man, Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash Am I the Asshole. Now, if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, smack that like button, and get ready for some good stories. Let's go. Am I the asshole because I didn't let my daughter skip a grade? My kids are Jonah, 14 male, and Emma, 12 female. And my husband is Johnny, 40 male, for clarity. Emma has always been brighter than is typical for her age. She was reading at 4 years old, and she's even gone to national competitions. We are really proud of her and all she's accomplishing. She's been in the gifted, talented program for a few years now, but now her school wants to take it further. They want her to go to the 8th grade this year instead of 7th. The thing is though, Jonah repeated a year, the 6th, so he actually is in the 8th grade. It was a hard year for him overall. He's a bit ashamed of that year, and it really bothers him that he didn't put in more effort. I don't think it would be good for him if he and Emma share classes, which is very likely because it's a small school. So I declined the skipping grades arrangement and asked if we can just give Emma further enrichment like we've been doing, because she can definitely do 8th grade work. I thought that would be the best for both kids. The trouble is that when I told Emma what we decided for her, she didn't take it well. She soon grew testy, saying that Jonah's school placement has nothing to do with her. I told her that I was thinking of both of them when I made that decision. Emma later went to her room in tears, but she wouldn't let me check on her all evening. Johnny sided with me saying that it was right that I took both kids into account, but Emma is clearly still bothered, and I really didn't want to upset her. I just wanted to be fair to everyone. Am I the asshole? I think you and Johnny need a reality check and realize that Emma was correct when she said it has nothing to do with her. You really are blindsided by your son having to stay back a grade because he didn't put enough work in, yet... That is enough reason to keep her back because she's putting too much work in or she has the ability to put much more work in and skip a grade? If this is what Emma wants and it's what the school is recommending, it is for the best for Emma. You guys are intentionally holding your daughter back in order to appease the feelings of your son. That's not cool. You're definitely the asshole for doing that. Now in the comments, Effective Part 3 says... Your son isn't doing well in school because he didn't put in the effort. And you're holding your daughter back because she's younger, and if she caught up, it would embarrass him? Let me think. Wow, that didn't take long. You're the asshole. This exactly. Where in the decision did Opie think about what was best for Emma? It's obviously best for Emma that she doesn't embarrass her brother. (laughs) Sarcasm, by the way. And you didn't even ask Emma before you decided for her and declined? That's awful. You're the asshole, OP. Here's the thing. I was the kid who wasn't given the opportunity to skip grades because my parents didn't want to embarrass a sibling. Because I was expected to work at a level for my grade, I was frequently accused of cheating as I was working off what I knew rather than what was expected from me. Will it suck for your son? Probably but you're hindering your daughter's growth to preserve his ego and give him his way. And that reeks of subconscious favoritism. Get your kiddo into therapy to help him handle his shortcomings instead of expecting your other child to handle the aftermath of it. Look, while I totally agree with your comment, as someone who was allowed to skip grades, two of them, including seventh, it was the worst thing my parents ever did for me. I handled myself just fine academically, but emotionally at 12 years old, I couldn't really hang out with 14 year olds, and they either bullied me or peer pressured me into doing things I wasn't comfortable with. The grass is always greener, I suppose. That's valid. I can understand that kind of emotional issue, potentially. I'm working specifically off of OP saying that she decided against it because she doesn't think that it'd be good for her son, not the child that would be jumping a grade. If she had made this choice based off whether or not her daughter was ready, that would be where I sit as well. I feel this way too. Making good decisions for bad reasons doesn't lead to good outcomes. Our next post is by user 57996A4333 titled, Am I the asshole for revealing to my wife's family we didn't purchase our house because it was inherited from my mother? 
To start, I want to mention that my wife and my mother, deceased, never had a very strong relationship. Yes, they were cordial to each other, but had many disagreements. Mum passed away and left me a one story house as my only inheritance. No one lived in it after she renovated it, so it looked fairly new. My wife was happy and excited when we moved in. She posted a video on social media and wrote that the house was bought with our money. I didn't know about her saying that until later. Her aunt was visiting from a distance to see the house my wife told her that we purchased. We sat to eat and chat for a bit, and her aunt brought up the house's value, asking how we could afford to buy it so suddenly. I was confused as my wife went on about putting money that we saved together towards buying it. I asked what she was talking about, and her aunt said that my wife told her the house was bought with our money and cost XXX amount. I corrected her, saying that this wasn't true because this house belongs to my mom, and she gave it to me after her passing. And I added that no, we are not doing well financially to be able to afford this house. The room went radio silent. My wife's aunt said, what? I'm sorry, I didn't know that. My wife's cousin side-eyed her and said, so isn't this mother-in-law the same mother-in-law you hated for years? Shame she's not here so you can thank her for leaving you this nice house. My wife was stunned at this point and excused herself to the bathroom. She didn't come out till they left. Then she blew up at me asking why I told them the house was inherited from my mum and making her look like a liar in front of them. I redirected the question at her and asked why she told them otherwise. She said there was no harm in showing off our new property and that people will appreciate us more for saying that we bought it with our own money instead of inherited it. I argued that this was wrong and unfair for my mum even if they never got along. She argued that I ruined her joy and humiliated her in front of her family, and because word got out, now everyone knows and will think that she's a liar when I could have simply played along since my mum wouldn't mind it or cause an issue over it now that she's deceased, so it won't matter to her. I stormed out after arguing with her and refusing to admit that I messed up by not being a part of the lie. Am I the asshole? No! What kind of question is that? That is so stupid from her part. How did she just decide that this was an okay thing to lie about? I get that it makes her feel good and it's probably cool in her eyes, but in the world of reality, no. How dumb can you be to think that your husband will just go along with this when you didn't fill him in on the situation? At least try and get him on your side before your aunt comes over and exposes your lie. I just don't understand the stupidity of some people. How can you be this dumb and not think this through, man? She deserves to be caught out on her lie. That was just nonsense. It didn't even need to exist in the first place. Not the asshole OP. Now in the comments, Messi Aurora says, quote, made her look like a liar. You didn't make her look like one. Her own behavior made her a liar. Not the asshole. Well, I ain't calling her a truther. Not the asshole. She ain't no truther. She's the sole reason she feels bad. She's lucky to have an honest husband. She didn't tell you her story, meaning she knew that you wouldn't like it. She should have been honest with you instead of expecting you to lie. Also, I feel that it's not considerate or equal that she dismissed what you and your family was able to offer her and instead take the credit. Disrespectful and manipulative. I hope she can come to her senses and take accountability for her actions. Not the asshole. Your wife is a liar and should have never said that. Give credit where credit is due. Your mum deserves the credit, plain and simple. Plus, it sounds like she was bad-mouthing your mum more than you know. The way the aunt said, oh, the woman you hated? Definitely not the asshole. Cousin said that, not the aunt, but yeah, not the asshole. Lol, the way the cousin piped up with what everyone was thinking. I love that kind of chaos. Abby Burb says, not the asshole. She called you a liar? You were not the one who lied here. You did not know that she'd made up this act. How could you play along? And why would you? This is completely disrespectful to your mother and her memory. Regardless if they got along or not, you don't have to like someone to be respectful. You did not make her look like a liar or humiliate her. She made herself rightfully look like a liar and humiliated herself. She should not be upset with you at all. She should be upset with herself. She owes you and your family a huge apology. 
Yup. She hated her mother-in-law and then tried to take credit for a gift from mother-in-law. Bet you that if they were to get divorced, she'd do everything she could to get 50% of the house that was left from the woman she hated. Annex post is by user throwra283827. Titled, Am I the asshole for being upset about my sister taking away her room for my children? Long time lurker, I apologize if I miss any information. My sister has always been super close to my children. 14 female, 10 female, and 8 male. She's been looking after them since she was in grade 10, so when she was 15, and when my middle child was 1. It started off as two weeks a month after school, and then she basically moved in with me until she was 18 and found her own place. When she was 20, she moved into a two-bedroom place and converted the second room into my children's bedroom. They came around hers every other weekend and some school holidays. The children are extremely close to her. They mistakenly refer to her as mummy sometimes, so maybe I should be more grateful about this situation. She lives in a three-bedroom place with her wife, she's a teacher, and her girlfriend is a hairdresser, if that's at all relevant. We were recently told that they're in the process of adoption. There is no child lined up yet, but they're hoping it'll be soon, and obviously I'm happy for my sister because she's so good with children, and she's been nothing but supportive of me and my children. My middle child was talking about how excited she was to babysit the baby and have sleepovers with said baby. My sister texted me, not even to my face, while my daughter was on my phone, which is how they found out that the children's bedroom will be converted into their children's bedroom, and that if anything, they'll get a sofa bed or an air mattress for when the children come to stay. As I said, as reluctant as I am about this, the children do consider my sister as their second mum, and to be pushed away like this because they're wanting a baby? I told her I was upset with this because they have their space, which they're currently using as a room for their rabbit. How could a rabbit be a priority? And it's not like they're babies so they can share rooms with a rabbit. My eldest goes to college in two years, and she was told that she could stay with them while she's completing college. She's messaged them upset and won't tell me what she's said. I said I felt like they were being selfish by pushing my children away for a child they don't even have and not even having the nerve to talk to my children face to face. Sister-in-law messaged my husband, once again not communicating, telling him how I ruined their special news and that it's manipulative, that their future child will take priority and the children may full well be grown up by the time they're even allowed a child. It's all become an issue. My husband is on my sister-in-law's side but honestly, I'm still upset. They've been there for my children, and the moment they may be getting a baby, my children have been pushed away, and they didn't even have the decency to tell us face to face. Am I the asshole? Yes. Now in the comments, Ozzy Altair says, I fixed it for you. My younger sister was parentified. She continued to look after my children for free when she was an adult. Her life situation changed and now she needs her room in her own house for her priorities. I'm so entitled, I think she should continue to run her life around my children. Am I the asshole? Yes, you're the asshole. You're the asshole. You've parentified this poor woman since she was 15. Let her have her own kids. Yup, and maybe the sister should ask OP which room will the child have in OP's room. And then how many days a month will OP be taking to have the new child? Entitled much? You're the asshole. Beyond parentified though. This is like a child custody schedule she built with her sister. Every other weekend and then some? Kids even called her mum sometimes? It makes me wonder what kind of mum that OP is. That this was the setup she created. Did she want kids and why did they spend so much time there? Why were her kids so emotionally invested in her sister that they call her mummy sometimes? You're the asshole. Her house, her life. You should be personally paying to redecorate it, throwing her a baby shower and then some after using her for like 15 years and not paying her a dime. She also fed them for a significant chunk of the year, invested many hours, and likely doted on them. Will you be taking her child every other weekend? Will you have a room for her child? I bet not, since you didn't even want yours around. 
Unexposed is by user Habibibibibibib titled Am I the asshole? My nephews missed a flight because they wouldn't put their seatbelts on. My brother is working and he asked me to take his nephews, 13 and 15 years old, to the airport to fly to their grandparents. I picked them up and then I drive off. I then got the annoying car notification telling me that their seatbelts aren't on. I told them to put the seatbelts on and they refused. I told them I don't care. It's like a $500 fine to drive a minor without a seatbelt on or something in California. They kept being spoiled brats, saying they don't need to, and dad lets them not wear seatbelts. I said I don't care. I won't drive until they wear their seatbelt. They kept whining that they're going to miss the flight. I said that's their problem. They called their dad who starts yelling at them to wear it. They do eventually, so we drive, but we get stuck in traffic and miss the flight. My brother is effing pissed, saying it's my fault for not just driving them. We waited about an hour before they decided to put their seatbelts on. This feels like a no-brainer kind of question, isn't it? I mean, it's your ass on the line if you decide to drive with them not having seatbelts on. The risk far outweighs the reward in this situation. And this is on his bad parenting, absolutely. If this isn't a spur of the moment where both kids just randomly decide not to wear seatbelts, but this is in fact, you know, a common behavior that they continue to show, then absolutely the father and the parenting style is to blame. I can't blame OP for putting their own priorities first, so I'm gonna say not the asshole. Now in the comments, Curiouser and Curiouser1 says, not the asshole. The missed flight is definitely on his kids. They are way too old for this to have happened. Not the asshole. How do you have that kind of patience? Anyone taking more than a few minutes to put their seatbelt on wouldn't be going anywhere in my car, ever. If I get into a car, I even ask the driver to wait until my seatbelt is on before they start to drive. It just takes one idiot ramming into you while you're still parked for you to get seriously hurt. Putting the seatbelt on should always be the first thing after your butt touches the seat. I just don't put the car in gear until everyone is buckled in. Fortunately, all my friends are smart, and I only have one passenger seat, so it's not much to police. My car doesn't even start until everyone's buckled in. I'm not wasting gas on stupid. Lol, not the asshole. What a couple of punks. You did the right thing. You could have gotten in trouble or endangered their lives. And would your brother have paid your ticket? Of course not. Would he be pissed at you if they got injured in the car? Of course he would. And also, he's a huge asshole for not making them wear their seatbelts regularly. And even if the brother paid the fine, it would be showing on OP's record. And that's not even the worst that could happen. What if they were in an accident and the kids didn't have their safety belts on? The kid's father is lucky to not have CPS called on his dumb ass. How incredibly reckless. Not the asshole. the kids were being brats, also known as little assholes, and their dad is the asshole. They most definitely need to wear their seatbelts. Their dad never enforcing that is an issue, and then missing their flight is the consequence of that. Besides, you were the responsible adult in this situation. You weren't doing anything to put them in danger, just the opposite. They were under your care and needed to follow your rules. Hopefully they learned a lesson here. And our next post is by user Cat Woes Throwaway, titled "Am I the asshole for kicking my boyfriend out over my cat?" For context, my 24 female boyfriend, 30 male, and I recently moved in together. It's something we've been talking about, and when his lease ended, he moved into my apartment. I have a cat, Millie, who is my baby girl, that I've had since she was a kitten. Back when my boyfriend and I first started dating, he made the joke that if we were going to live together, he'd have to get rid of that cat, which I dismissed at the time. When he would come over, he would ignore Millie, making jokes about how cats are stuck up and how much he's a dog person. Again, I dismissed this because he never acted hostile towards her. I figured it was just a preference. When we started to get serious about moving in, he asked if I would consider giving her away because he didn't like the idea of living with a cat. I almost laughed before realizing he was serious. I told him that under no circumstances would I get rid of my cat. 
I felt guilty about being unwilling to compromise, but he actually took it well and reassured me that if she was this important to me, he would get over it. Fast forward to last night, I don't think he realized I was in the kitchen when he came home. Millie was on the couch and I heard him go into the room and give this sigh. Before I could call out, I heard him say, Ah, you're so effing worthless. It terrified me, because I've never ever heard him speak with such malice. He sounded like a different person. It was just so cold and hostile that I panicked and rushed out there to see him looking at Millie. Here is where I might be the asshole. I completely freaked out. I was yelling and asking what he thought he was doing talking to her like that. He jumped and I scooped Millie up and told him to leave my apartment right now. He looked so stunned and started to argue, asking where was he supposed to go. I told him that I don't care, he just needs to leave. He was pissed and said that he was going for a drive and slammed the door behind him. I immediately started sobbing and holding Millie. I was shaking and she could tell that I was upset and kept cuddling me. She calmed me down and later when he texted asking if he could come back, I said yes. I then put Millie in the bedroom so we could talk. We were both a lot calmer and I felt awful after he explained his side. I'll often call Millie little names and he said he was just trying to be playfully mean too and misjudged his tone but he said that it felt awful that I chose a cat over him and that I called it my apartment when it's supposed to be our place. He told me he was constantly feeling second best to Millie, who I wouldn't even consider rehoming, and I had thrown him out over an animal when he's a person. I explained to him how much he means to me, and I apologized for ever making him feel like this wasn't his home. I think I might have overreacted, but I just don't know. He's my boyfriend and she's something I keep refusing to compromise on, but I also don't believe that he just misjudged his tone. Am I the asshole? Look, I'm going to say you're not the asshole for your actions here, kicking him out of your place. I feel like you know him best out of all of us, and if you really believe his story, then fair enough. But the way you're writing this, it makes it seem like he just wants to get rid of the cat. He really doesn't care, and he's gotten back into the apartment. Now he's going to manipulate you and be like, Oh my god, you care about the cat more than me. You don't actually love me, do you? This isn't even my house. You're overreacting, it's just a cat. Look, you'd rather kick me out over the cat? What's the point of even having a cat in the first place? I'm just going off of what you're writing here, OP. I'm going to say that it's very suggestive and it suggests that he's being manipulative and abusive. That's all I can say. I'm going to say you're not the asshole, but tread carefully. Now in the comments, Science Not Kids says, Not the asshole, and he's lying now. Don't let him gaslight you. Your cat is going to go missing someday. This, 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 this. If for some reason you do continue this, make sure you have plenty of photographs of her and you as proof that she is yours and that she's microchipped because she will end up on the streets or dropped off at a shelter. All of this. I work at a shelter and I've seen multiple cats returned by the significant other of the original adopter. We always take the cat and then contact the actual owner to make sure it was actually their choice. A few times, this kind of situation did end a relationship, but the cats got to be back with their owners. We even had a recent incident with a cat who was found on the street and ended up with us, and the owner saw her online and scheduled a time to come collect her, but then never showed up. When we called the owner to check up, she said her boyfriend didn't want the cat back, so we could just keep her. Please, please... Do not feel like a bad person for valuing your cat's safety over your boyfriend. He's a whole adult, capable of taking care of himself. You are her whole world, and she needs you in her corner. I won't say rehoming a cat is always bad, as often it can be for the cat's own good. But in this case, I would worry that this whole situation is him testing your boundaries, and nothing good ever comes from giving in to boundary pushes. 
Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below. And make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.